go throughout the entire scriptures to see, number one, you can and should pray to the Father by the authority of Jesus Christ. You can and you should pray to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can and you should pray to the Holy Spirit. It's all of the above. So real quickly, the answer. You are two and you can and you should pray to all three. Why? Because all three are God. If the Father is God, then he's worthy of worship, love, adoration, and prayer. If the Son is God, then he too is worthy of worship, adoration, love, and prayer. If the Holy Spirit is God, he too is worthy of worship, adoration, love, and prayer. And the fact is, all three are God. They're not the same person. They're not separate gods. And therefore, all three are worthy of the worship, adoration, love, devotion, and prayer that the true God demands and must receive from his creation. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to the Holy Spirit. So, in your prayer, you can pray to Jesus. You can even pray to the Holy Spirit, or you can pray to the Father. Or you can pray to two of the divine persons, or to all three of the divine persons at the same time. It's as the Holy Spirit leads you, inviting the Spirit to lead you how to pray, what to pray for, who to pray for, and to whom you should address. Let me repeat. You can pray to the Father. And end your prayer to the Father. You can pray to Jesus and end your prayer by praying to Jesus. You can pray to the Holy Spirit and end your prayer by praying to the Holy Spirit. Or you can pray to two of the three persons, all three at the same time. You understand? Now I'm going to give you the biblical proof for this. So it may take me two parts. I don't need to prove that you should and can and must pray to the Father. That's a given. I do not know of anyone anti-Trinitarian, that denies that we are to pray to the Father. So I don't think I need to establish that, right? That I don't think we need to establish. That's a given. Even anti-Trinitarians, cults, Bible butchers, Muslims agree, you pray to the Father because Muslims say the one you call Father is Allah. There's no debate on that. Now, what does it mean, though, to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. A lot of people don't understand what that means. When it says to pray in the Father in Jesus' name, like our Lord commanded, let's, let's go to the Bible. For your glory, Father. For your glory, Lord Jesus Christ. For your glory, Holy Spirit. You're the teacher, Holy Spirit. Save me from error. Let me use the Revised Standard. For, no. I got to use Legacy Standard Bible for the word Yahweh. Or should I use World English Bible? I'm going to use World English Bible. Why? The Web Bible, which you can find at BibleGateway.com, is based on the majority text, the Byzantine text. Okay. Let me explain what it means to pray to the Father in Jesus' name, because people misunderstand that. Here it is, John 15, verse 16, and John 16, verse 23. Okay? Let me, let me break that down. Okay? We're going into meat. Stuff you may not be learning in your own churches. And stuff you may not even learn in Bible college. I'm not exaggerating. John 15, 16. Focus, brethren. Yeah, 777, seven, seven, right? Do not distract me. Do not go off topic. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you will ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Did you catch it? This is where we get praying to the Father in Jesus' name. In my name, he may give it to you. John 15, 16. John 16, 23. Now, people, a lot of people don't know what this means. So I'm going to explain it. As Holy Spirit corrects me from any mistakes and perfects my recall of Scripture for the glory of the Father and of the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Don't worry. That old biblical sand will still show up from time and time. John 16, 23. In that day, you will ask me no questions. And that day, when I'm raised and I appear to you in my glorified physical body, confirming to you beyond any people doubt that I am the Lord God, risen, and you who believe in me will never die but live forever, and you will dwell with me. Most certainly, I tell you, whatever you, you may ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So you guys ready to learn? Should I unpack what that means? You ready to learn? 
I know there's going to be a 16 second delay from when I say something, you hear it. Now you ready to learn? Exactly, Seraphim. The new Sam has come to fulfill the old Sam. In my name doesn't simply mean, say, in Jesus' name. Okay, a lot of people say, think it's saying, in Jesus' name. It's more complicated than that. In my name doesn't simply mean saying, in Jesus' name. In my name means, when you pray, right? When you pray to the Father, I am giving you the authority, the authorization to pray to the Father. And when you do it for my sake, because of your union in me, with me, and your faith in me and love for me, because of me and your faith in me and your union with me, my Father will hear your prayer. So let me explain what it means. In my name means it is because of what I have done for you, it is for my sake, on my behalf, that the Father will answer you. What this means is, if you are praying apart from your faith in Jesus Christ, and not just any Jesus, because Satan has erected many counterfeit Jesus. The Mormon Jesus is a fake Jesus. The Jehovah Witness Jesus is a fake Jesus. The Islamic Jesus is a fake Jesus. The Unitarian Jesus is a fake Jesus. The modalist Jesus is a fake Jesus. It has to be the real, true Jesus. When you pray without faith in Christ, your union with Christ, your trust in Christ, your prayer is an abomination. Are you with me there? When it says, in my name, it means the Father answers your prayers for my sake, because of me, on my behalf. So rest assured, if you're in me and you love me and you're trusting in me and you're obeying me, then when you pray because of your love for me and union with me, the Father will answer. That's what it means. I am authorizing you to pray to the Father because of me, the Father answers you. Because of me, the Father will do what you ask, provided you're asking in, in line with our will for your life. You understand what it means? In the name of Christ means that Christ has given you the authority to know that when you ask the Father, because of your love for Him and your union with Him, the Father will answer your prayer. Because apart from Jesus Christ, nothing you do will be pleasing to God. I'm going to give you the verses for this. So now you understand what it means in the name of Christ? For the sake of Christ, on behalf of Christ, Christ authorizes you to approach the Father having full con confidence that because of your love for Christ and union with Christ, the Father will answer you. Okay? Here, let me show you from Scripture. Hebrews 4, 14 and 16. Hebrews 4, 14 and 16, and from the Lord himself. So you now understand what it means and what it doesn't mean? You understand what it means and what it does? It's not simply invoking in the name of Jesus. It's more complicated than that. Here it is. Hebrews 4, 14, 16. Here's what it means. Having then, Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Having then a great high priest, the Lord Jesus, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, Son of God, let's hold tightly to our confession. He's our high priest who offered his life as a sacrifice for our sins, who mediates for us. He's our confidence that he's there for us, standing in our place representing us because he's a glorified man, the head of a new creation, a restored humanity. He's there as a glorified man representing us humans who are united to him. For we don't have a high priest who can't be touched, right? With the feeling of our feelings, he sympathizes with us because he became human and experienced human weakness, frailty, the full orb of human emotion with the exception of sin. But one who has been in all points tempted like we are yet without sin. Now here's what 16 says. Let's therefore draw near with boldness. See, that's the point. Be bold and don't be afraid, knowing this is whom you have representing you and making your prayers pleasing to God. So knowing that, come boldly to the throne of mercy and favor and compassion. 
knowing for the sake of Jesus, the Father loves you and adores you and delights to hear and receive your prayers, that we may receive mercy and may find grace for help in time of need. Why should we approach the throne of God boldly? Because Jesus is our confidence. He has earned and procured the right for you to be heard. You understand what it means? Say what it means? Yep, the Holy Spirit confirms, right, Nick? All right. Here it is from Jesus' own holy mouth. If you abide in him and he in you, you will bear much fruit that pleases God. Because apart from you can do nothing that God will be pleased with. John 15, verses 4 and 5. John 15, verse 4 and 5. I'll repeat myself two to three times until it becomes second nature because I want you to learn the information. I want you to understand information because if you do, then it will be your responsibility to share it accurately with your loved ones, your children, your spouses, your siblings, neighbors, and at church. Okay? John 15, 4 and 5. Here. Remain in me and I in you. You've got to remain in me. As the branch can't bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. You will not bear any fruit that pleases God unless it's in me, your love for me, your obedience to me, because I make your deeds acceptable to God. Right? I am the vine, you are the branches. He remains in me and I in him. Bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. That's what it means. Do you understand now what it means? Do you understand now what it means? Do you now understand what it means? In the name of Jesus, meaning because of Christ and your union with Christ and your love for Christ, Christ has now given you the authority to go before the Father with the assurance he will answer you because of the Lord Jesus Christ. You want me there? That's what it means. That's what it means. In my name, on my behalf, for my sake, I authorize you to go to the Father because the Father will answer you because of me. On my behalf, for my sake. That's all it means. Are you with me there? Did we get that so I can now move into the other part? So I can now show you that Jesus is to be prayed to, and the Holy Spirit is to be prayed to because they're all the one God. In other words, even if you don't end the prayer in Jesus' name, if you're in Christ and you're loving Christ and seeking to honor Christ and obeying Christ and confessing your sin when you fail, even if you don't say in Jesus' name, it is not a formula that you invoke every time. It is simply the reassurance given to you by the Lord that if you're in me, because of me, for my sake, the Father will answer you. Why do you think in the Orthodox and the Catholic tradition They'll often end prayers in, in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Right? They're not always ending in the name of Jesus Christ because it's not meant to be a formula. It is meant to reassure you that your union with me and your love for me and your desire to honor me, though you fail but you confess in turn, that union is what will make the Father receive and answer your prayers for my sake on my behalf. 